Okay, the chapter we're putting up at the moment is like a, a midterm break. It's sort of thrown between some chapters we've done recently on this amazing skull that's developing as I speak right now and some new rocks that have come in that really are from a technology I haven't seen here before anyway. But between that, it's become really apparent to us that the, there's a changing academic climate out there and a lot of people are now questioning all of the premises and all of the beliefs in relation to where we came from and our origins. And this particular article we've put together is taken, inspired by two papers. One by a guy called Chris Stringer, who's one of the top archaeologists in this country right now. And another by an archaeologist geographer who put out a paper or was interviewed the same month and year I was born in 1953, which is 65 years old. And what's really interesting is when you put the two of these papers together, they give you a very clear understanding, A, between the question Stringer asks in a paper he calls Rethinking the Out-of-Africa Theory. And it's not where he gives up on the Out-of-Africa Theory, but what he does do is acknowledge a lot of issues with them. And one that comes to mind readily, and it's the only one I'll talk about now, are the hobbits, Homo florensis, that are found on an island. Now, that island has always been separate from the mainland of Asia, irrespective of what ice age and where the water levels were. There's always been a gap of about 23, 25 k's, and it's quite a treacherous strait. Um, strait. And to get onto that island, you need a boat. That's agreed. Now, the problem for um, Stringer is that the hobbits got there, according to him and everyone, by boat, and they probably did. But the date when they got there goes into six figures, which he'll readily admit, and it probably goes back much further. And it's by a species that has a brain size that's oh, just a bit over a third bigger than ours is now, and it's supposed to be because of the size of the brain, capable of very little, yet manifestly knew how to sail a boat and to get enough people or beings inside that boat so they wouldn't inbreed because they successfully lived there for a long period of time. And then to explain why you want to get on that boat involves many things that only Homo sapiens sapiens are supposed to do. And the theory is that only Homo sapiens sapiens had boats that could do this. But here we have hobbits that could go back two million years doing what was considered the crowning pinnacle of sapien marining, uh, sort of sailing around the world, uh, making a boat that could get from Africa to Australia or from Indonesia or from India to Australia. That is the beginning of sailing around the world. It's a huge step forward. And now it seems like, according, and this is something he had a lot of problems with, trying to factor into this new species that is a brain size not much bigger than a chimpanzee, but that could have a language, have a culture, and sail to another place at the wrong time, as simple as that. And what the paper is about is time after time, the existence of Denisovans. There are so many things that don't fit into the out of Africa theory. In the end, he goes for it happening in a lot of different places, not just in Africa, and says he's still hanging on to it. But the whole paper tells me different stories about why he shouldn't. And the second paper we're looking at was written in 1953 by an American who has absolute evidence that A, humans, Homo sapiens sapiens or something quite wise, whatever it was, was in America hundreds of thousands of years ago. And this is in 1953. And he puts his money on it being the Australian original people. They were in that country hundreds of thousands of years ago. Now, he is actually a geologist and, and an archaeologist. In fact, he was so concerned about the fact that archaeology didn't have much science in its work and its arsenal, he became a geologist and was a professor at John Hopkins University. So this guy is not just a run-of-the-mill academic. In 1953, he was giving dates of 400, 300, 200,000 years as a minimum 
and he was putting all his money on them being the same group of people genetically linked as the Australian original people. And the reason we chose that one is it because it was out 65 years ago and the evidence was incredibly strong then, but no one took any notice. Now the evidence is coming in all over the place, but don't think it just came in yesterday. It's been around for a long time. People just have lost the art of looking for it. But those two together come back to the same story. In Stringer, he's talking about the fact that the out of Africa theory, geez, it has a lot of holes in it, a lot of problems with it. It just doesn't fit in this level, doesn't fit in that level, but I'll take it as the best option. If you turn it all around, you put it into Australia, well, we know things were taking place between Australia and America hundreds of thousands of years ago. Well, then it starts to make it much easier to fix up the holes that go the other way around. So anyway, those are the two, um, that's what this article so this article's about. And the next one, we'll get back to the skull that has been identified on so many levels by so many different people has been unlike any that's ever been seen in this country or on any country on this planet. And that one's a, it's a work in progress. And the next six or the next step will be quite phenomenal. But we're working on that. And in the meantime, this article just reminds everyone that if you think really that in academia is in a united agreement, united agreement about ancestry, We'll read these two articles, one by a guy that thinks it probably is, and finds lots of reasons to have cast doubt, and from another 65 years before that definitely knows something that if it's right, means what the other person was thinking is probably right too. He shouldn't be thinking about the out-of-Africa theory. He shouldn't just rethink it. He should dump it. Anyway, next time back, We'll have something amazing to talk about with the skull, but for now, have a look what two experts say. And now they basically pull apart what's there and keep hinting at the same place, the original Australian people.